All right, folks, so Apple just announced their brand new lineup of MacBook Pros with their new powerhouse M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. And we've been waiting for these for a long, long time. And based on what they said about the performance of these chips, they should be worth the wait. So during their keynote, they listed off a lot of general specs as well as a lot of the up to specs, like up to a 10 core CPU, up to a 32 core GPU, and up to 64 gigabytes of memory. But at that point, we didn't really know what the options would be in between the base model all the way up to the maxed out spec, as well as the prices for all those options. Personally, I knew I was looking for a pretty fast spec just because my 2018 Intel-based Core i9 MacBook Pro that I have right here has definitely been showing its age while editing on Premiere Pro for my main YouTube channel. So when I get simultaneous 4K clips going on this thing, that fan starts to kick on quite a bit and things just kind of slow down quite a bit. It's still a very decent machine, but it's interesting to see how far we've come from the original MacBook Pros. And I'm really excited for these new models. Of course, it's hard to say what the performance of these chips are actually gonna be like until we actually have them in our hands so we can do some benchmarks on them, but from the performance that they delivered on the original M1 chip, I don't know, I think these new chips could be screamers. So when I started to play around with some of the options and what you can get with each model, I found some interesting things I wanted to share that weren't super apparent on the surface, especially because they don't list many base model configs on the first page that you land on when choosing your MacBook Pro. Anyhow, let's start with the 14 inch models and you have two options of the M1 Pro chip for these, at least on this starting page. With the base model, you get an eight core CPU and 14 core GPU with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and half a terabyte of storage. For comparison, the 13 inch MacBook Pro with an eight core CPU, eight core GPU, and eight gigabytes of RAM with half a terabyte of storage costs $500 less. So if you're considering the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I think the 14 inch base model M1 Pro is well worth the $500 with six more cores for the GPU, twice the RAM, and not to mention all the new ports on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. But just note that the 13 inch model does get a little bit longer battery life than the 14 inch version, although 17 hours still seems very respectable. But then let's look at the higher spec 14 inch model with a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a terabyte of storage. And that costs $500 more for a more powerful CPU and GPU. This model is gonna be a great option for all of you out there that want similar power to the 16 inch base model M1 Pro, just in a smaller package. The difference between this 14 inch model and the base model 16 inch M1 Pro that costs the same amount is that the 16 inch version comes with half the storage, but you obviously get a larger display. What's interesting about this 14 inch model though is that you can spec this guy out with the M1 Mac chip with that insane 32 core GPU. And if you do that, you can also get up to 64 gigabytes of memory and the support for four external monitors versus the two on the M1 Pro. And then you can choose storage options all the way up to eight terabytes. Of course, this will cost you. So if you want all that power, but don't necessarily need much storage, that one terabyte version comes in at $36.99. The two terabyte version comes in at $4,100. And then the monster eight terabyte option at, wait for it, $58.99. So compare that to the same maxed out spec 16 inch M1 max model at $6,100. So only a $200 difference between the 14 inch and the 16 inch M1 max models with similar specs. Although you'll get more battery life out of the 16 inch model with up to 21 hours. So that's definitely kind of interesting that there's only a $200 difference between similarly spec 14 and 16 inch models of the M1 Max MacBook Pros. And it's also gonna be interesting to see if there's gonna be any performance difference between the 14 and 16 inch models since they obviously have different sizes, so they're gonna have a little bit different internals. Okay, so we jumped ahead a bit there with the maxed out model. So let's get back to looking at the difference between the 16 inch Pro and Max model. So $2,500 is for the base level 16 inch Pro model. And that isn't a bad price for that spec, but it only comes with half a terabyte of storage. That seems a little bit small in this day and age. So I don't know, I'd almost call this middle option right here with the one terabyte, kind of the base model, unless you just don't store that much on your local hard drive. But still $2,700, that's pretty well decked out machine. Again, where it gets interesting though, is when you compare the M1 Pro higher end spec to the base spec of the M1 Max. So what I first wanna point out is that if you choose this option on the right with the M1 Max with the 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, 32 gigabytes memory and one terabyte of storage, they don't currently have an option for the slightly slower version of the M1 Max chip with a 24 core GPU versus the 32 core GPU. I definitely found that kind of interesting. And at first it appears that $3,500 is the starting price for the M1 Max, but there is that version that you can get that's $200 cheaper. But let's get back to the Pro versus Max. So if we have similar options chosen for memory as well as the SSD, there's basically a $400 difference between the Pro and Max models. For me, I wavered back and forth quite a bit and I actually ordered one, eventually canceled that order, and then decided on a little bit different spec. 
So the first one I ordered was this config right here, the M1 Pro with 32 gigabytes of memory and two terabytes of storage. But honestly, I'm pretty sure I made a mistake here because for the same memory as well as the same hard drive, but with double the GPU cores, which allows me to run more external monitors, that was just $400 more. Again, it's kind of hard to say what the difference will be in terms of performance of the M1 Pro chip versus the M1 Max chip until we actually have these in our hands, but I kind of decided to take the risk based on the performance of the original M1 chip. So anyways, for buying advice, if you're considering a maxed out 13 inch MacBook Pro, I think the 14 inch base model is gonna be a better bet just because you're gonna be getting the new M1 Pro chip as well as the convenience of all those ports. And then for those of you needing more power in a portable package, holy cow, do you have so many options with that 14 inch model with the ability to max out the specs to have the same exact specs as a maxed out 16 inch model. I thought that was kind of cool. So in this sort of case, size doesn't really matter. And then if you're considering a maxed out 16 inch M1 Pro model, I definitely think about the fact that for $400 more, you can get the M1 Max chip that also has support for four external monitors versus the two on the Pro model. Anyhow, I hope the information in this video helped you decipher all the different options with these new exciting models. Mine's on the way and I'll definitely have some follow-up videos where I'll be talking about how it compares to my aging i9 MacBook Pro, which I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a night and day difference, as well as whether or not I think the M1 Max Pro chip is worth it. In the meantime, while I wait for the new machine to arrive, I'll be counting on this guy to get me through all the edits on my other YouTube channel. And if you are interested in fitness technology like smartwatches as well as GPS watches, over on that channel, I do really in-depth reviews of those devices. So I'll have a link down in the description below if you wanna check out that sort of content. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.